Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. In this video, I wanted to do an update on a series we did a number of years ago and it was looking a little bit older, and that is the Beginner's Guide to the Aquarium Hobby. In this part, we are going to be talking about the things you should be thinking about before you purchase that first aquarium. So if you are new to the fish keeping hobby, you are in the right place. This is going to be a multi-part series. The Beginner's Guide to the Aquarium Hobby playlist that we have listed down in the description below should be very helpful for you. Appreciate you being here. Hope you enjoy the video. All right, so when it comes to the aquarium hobby, it can be a really super exciting thing. As you can see behind me, we have between 70 and 80 tanks, depending on what's going on in our fish room. I've been keeping fish for 41 years. Also have a master's degree in biotechnology and chemical science and a master's cert in aquaculture and fish health. So in this series, I'm hoping to bring that background and help you avoid some mistakes that are commonly done by new fish keepers. So one of the things that we want to consider is how much time do you have? A lot of people think when they get into the aquarium hobby, it's going to be so much easier than keeping a dog or a cat or a guinea pig. And the truth is that there's going to be some fish tank maintenance involved, usually on a weekly basis. And the size of the fish tank is going to really help determine how much time you're going to spend. So you want to identify how much time do you have over the course of a week to maintain your fish tank. Now, usually that time requirement for a single fish tank might be anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour a week. Again, that depends on the size of the tank, and we'll get into that in a few minutes. The next thing you want to consider is what is your dedication and interest level. Here we want to be really honest with ourselves. If we're the type of person that gets really into something and then six months later it's like, yeah, I'm kind of bored with that, that is also going to help us determine how much money we want to dedicate to the hobby and how large of a tank that we want to purchase when we first get started. This is especially true if you have children who are trying to convince you that, yes, I want a fish tank and I am going to maintain the tank, I'm going to feed the fish, I will also give the dog a bath, do the dishes, wash the car every week, and vacuum. Some of us know that sometimes kids can be really interested in something and then after it's not new anymore, a month or two later, they don't want anything to do with it. So as a parent, as an adult, I generally assume if we bring something into the house, when my kids were younger, there would always be a potential for that to happen, and ultimately the maintenance would fall on my shoulders. And so that's something you might want to consider. The next thing you want to consider is the, how much space do you have to dedicate to a fish tank, because that's going to determine the size of the tank that you ultimately purchase. If you've got more space in a big open area on a wall, or you've got a very large sturdy piece of furniture, that may be different than, oh, I'm just looking for something to put on a desktop. The biggest, most important consideration when you are trying to figure out what type of fish tank to purchase are the fish that you want to keep. I would highly recommend do the research before you buy the tank. And there's a few ways that you can do this. One, start going to your local fish stores or maybe you've just got a big box store like a PetSmart or Petco in the area and look at the fish. Which fish interests you the most? And then go on the internet and start doing a lot of research on those fish species. How big of a tank do they need long term? What types of other fish can you keep with them? We have a lot of species profiles that we've done on our channel. I will put the playlist down in the description below if you want more information. But that is one of the most important things that you can do is research the fish before you buy the tank so that you know you're buying a tank that can house the fish that you really like. Now, when it comes to the size of the fish tank, again, part of this is going to depend on how much money you want to spend and all the other factors that we've talked about so far. But my recommendation is you probably want to be over a five gallon tank. So I would set five gallons as your minimum. And I would probably set a 29 gallon as my maximum. That might surprise some of you. Oh, bigger is always better. That's true. A, a larger tank can be easier to maintain water parameters. But if you're just getting started and you don't even know if you're going to be in the hobby a year from now, I would set that cap somewhere around a 29 gallon. Now, there are gonna be different challenges depending on the size tank that you choose. So for instance, a five gallon tank, you could put that on a desktop. You could put that on a sturdy piece of furniture. Generally speaking, a fish tank is gonna weigh about 10 pounds per gallon of water once you include all the gravel and everything else. I personally like to set the minimum at a 10 gallon for beginners because I think that's gonna offer you some more stocking options than a smaller tank will. By the way, if you're looking for what kinds of fish can I put in these different size tanks, I will put that playlist down in the description below as well. So if you want to know, hey, I'm interested in a 20 gallon, what kinds of fish can I put in a 20 gallon fish tank? Those options will be down below. It's not an exhaustive list, but it will certainly get you started. 
So most likely, I think a 10 gallon is probably a reasonable minimum. And the reason for that is you've got a couple competing factors. Yes, you want to make sure that you're using your money wisely. You want to make sure that you're going to be in the hobby in six months or a year, so you don't want to waste your money. But at the same time, it's easier to maintain stable water parameters the larger the fish tank that you have. So a five gallon or less, that can be a little bit difficult, especially for somebody who's new. As you get into the 10 gallons, between that 10 and 29 gallon, that's a pretty nice range. It's gonna give you a compromise of, I can keep different types of fish in these tanks, and it's a little bit easier to maintain the water parameters to keep them stable. So for a 10 gallon, if you buy a fish tank kit, we've done videos on whether or not fish tank kits are worth the money. I'll put that in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. But if you bought a 10 gallon kit, it's gonna give you most of what you need to get the tank started other than the decorations and the fish. Maybe you're looking somewhere, depending if it's on sale or not, around 50 to $100. That includes everything, the decorations, the fish, you know, a few fish to get you started. If you're looking at a 20 gallon, Maybe you're now 100 to 150 dollars in a 29 gallon, maybe 150 to 200. That's assuming everything is new, and that's assuming decorations and fish as well. Now, once you've settled on a fish tank, there's some things that you should consider before you set it up, and that is where are you putting this tank? A sturdy piece of furniture can generally hold tanks maybe five to 10 gallons relatively safely. And I mean sturdy, it's not rocking back and forth, it's a well-built piece of furniture. Once we start getting into those 20 to 29 gallons and above, now we wanna consider a dedicated fish tank stand. Now I've seen lots of people keep 20 gallon fish tanks on a very sturdy piece of furniture, but now keep in mind, that's a couple hundred pounds. So that is not a light thing going on top of a piece of furniture. Therefore, you might be better off with a dedicated fish tank stand. By the time you get to 29 gallons and greater, I almost 100% of the time recommend you have a fish tank stand that, can, that is rated to hold that size fish tank. Now, when it comes to placing your fish tank in your home or in an office, you wanna to try to stay away from windows and doors. And the reason for that is one, if you, especially if you live in a colder climate, in the winter time, that cold air might come through the window a little bit, even if the window is closed, and if you're opening and closing doors, especially if you do so frequently, that can make it a little bit harder to maintain proper water temperature, stable water temperature in your fish tank. The other issue that you may have with a window is if you're getting direct sunlight into that tank, it might make it a little bit more difficult to maintain the algae that's growing in your tank. So the nice thing is when you have a fish tank light, that's the only source of light that's easier to figure out if there's an algae issue or how to maintain it. If you've got direct sunlight coming in, that's gonna complicate things. So try to stay away from direct sunlight, try to stay away from the windows and doors. The other thing that you wanna consider is Put your fish tank in a place where you can enjoy it. It might be cool like we have here. We've got our fish tanks in our basement, but we're down here a lot. If you find yourself not in your basement a lot, you're gonna put your fish tank down there and now you're only going down there to feed it. Is that really gonna provide you the enjoyment that you hope it will provide for you? You also might wanna consider staying away from areas that are overactive where you've got lots of action going on that might stress your fish. Think about your floors. If your floors are carpeted, and you have a fish tank stand and you've got a narrow fish tank like maybe a 20 gallon or even a 55 gallon, be especially careful with those tanks if they're gonna be on carpet and you've got small children because if they start climbing on stuff, there is a potential safety issue there. So maybe a wider tank as opposed to a, a more narrow tank might be better. Also, when it comes to floors, make sure that your tank is on a relatively level surface. So if the floor is not level, make sure the stand or the piece of furniture that you're gonna put the tank on is level. Finally, and this is not something that a lot of people think about, you're gonna to have to maintain your fish tank. We'll talk more about that in future videos, but when you maintain your fish tank, you're gonna to have to change water. So how close is your fish tank to the water source? If you've got a smaller tank and you're gonna be using cups or buckets and you have to now move those cups and buckets across the house, that's not gonna be something you're gonna to wanna to do every week. If it's closer to a sink, if it's closer to that water source, it's gonna be a little bit easier. If you've got a water changing system, that makes life a little bit easier. You just have to make sure your hoses will reach back and forth from the tank to your sink. Now, there are two pieces of advice that I would like to give new fish keepers. One, do your research. Make sure you research your fish, research water parameters and what the nitrogen cycle means. I will put those videos in the description below and have patience. Those are the two most important things when it comes to fish keeping. Of course, have fun. 
And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We have a lot of videos that can help beginners get through the hobby and have a really enjoyable experience. If you enjoyed this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.